Hey everyone, it's Deja from Knit and Crochet Ever After, and today is our first Knit for Crocheters project. So if you've been following along this week with all of the different tutorials for basic knit stitches, you know that I said I would put out a pattern of the very first thing that I really wanted to learn how to knit, and you'll find it very easy and you'll be like, that was so simple. Um, but this one by one rib, this is the reason that I learned to knit because I had a scarf like this that got ruined and I really wanted to recreate it and it sent me on this multi-year journey to try to learn how to knit and now I'm bringing the pattern to you with some helpful tips on how to get some nice edging to your project, different things. You can see this thing is ginormous. I'll talk about um, the yarn that I used, which is... Karen Chunky Cakes. I like these colors. They're really pretty. Very muted, not super bright like most of the cake yarns that I've seen in Trifle. And then we are using some eight, whoops, knocking my camera over, eight millimeter straight needles. You can use circulars or whatever you find comfortable, but make sure they're eight millimeter. Check out the gauge on the pattern and download the pattern in the link below. Otherwise, we'll get started. Okay, so to begin our one by one ribbed scarf, we are going to do a crochet cast on to get our stitches onto our needle. So if you haven't seen a crochet cast on before, check out my little longer in depth video, but we're gonna kind of get started on this. So first thing we need to do is make a slip knot. So turn down, grab your working yarn and pull through. And then instead of putting that on your needle, you're gonna put it on your crochet hook. So we are going to be crocheting our cast on. So we are going to take our needle and we're gonna put our hook in the front of it and our yarn behind it. And then we're gonna kind of just foundation chain around the needle to create our stitches. So we are going to do 24 cast ons. So I'm gonna yarn over, grab, I'll hold onto my tail to get through easy and I'm gonna pull through the loop on my hook and now I've got my first stitch attached. I'm gonna bring this closer to the edge because I have to bring my yarn around after every single one to get it back into the correct place. So I'll pull through for two, back around, three. You can see these make them nice and spread out because of the actual chain of the crochet, which gives us an easy stitch to work into on that first row. Four. I'm on 20, I've got four more, but I wanted to go over why I would use this crochet cast on instead of say a long tail cast on. Since we're not putting a edging on this scarf, I want a nice bottom edge. So this bottom edge is going to match my bind off when I finish and it's gonna give it a nice looking finished edge on both sides. So I've got 23. Then my 24 is on my hook, so I'm going to slide that right on to my needle. Get the right side on there so it is the correct orientation. And then I'm ready for row one. Okay, so for row one, I'm going to show you on this yarn instead of the blue because it's so dark. When I get to a lighter color yarn, then I will show you some other stuff because this is variegated so unfortunately both ends of this yarn is dark blue all the light stuff is in the middle so once i get there to i'll show you some more um, stuff to to consider when you're making your project but what we're going to do first this is not 24 stitches obviously um, because this is a one by one rib you can change the size of the scarf you want it skinnier or wider Add as many cast on stitches as you like, but in even numbers. So I'll explain that when we get to the end of the row. Do I even have even numbers on this? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, I have thirteen. I don't want thirteen. I'm just gonna pull that, pull that and fix it. That was our um, slip knot, but we can just pull that off and do another one. So that's something you can do if you do too many cast on stitches. Just pull it off, pull it out like foundation chain and put the next one you have on your needle. So 
The first thing I'm gonna do, because a one by one is knit, purl, knit, purl, I'm not gonna knit this first stitch though. I'm going to do a clean edge along the side because when you're new and beginning, your edges can look very messy and it's just practice to get your edges nice and tight. So an easy way, if you have a problem with that, is to slip your first stitch of every row. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip it purl-wise. So instead of doing a knit, I'm gonna slip it like I'm doing a purl. I'm not bringing my yarn to the front though because that would create kind of a little nub in my pattern. I don't want the nub, I just want to slip it. Why am I slipping it purl-wise? Because when I turn my work to work into it, my stitch is oriented the right way. I have the right loop in the front, like I was supposed to, the right as in the direction right. If I were to slip it knit-wise, when I go to work it and I flip it around, I now have the left in the front. So I'll have a twisted stitch. So Usually if it says slip the first stitch, if it doesn't tell you knit-wise or purl-wise, it's usually purl-wise. So sometimes they'll tell you to slip it knit-wise because they want the twisted stitch, but if it doesn't specify, slip it purl-wise. And when we come back, you'll see why or kind of what happens because we have slipped it instead of working it. So one thing that we need to remember though is that the next stitch is a purl. So normally when you're seeing like a one by one, it's gonna just say knit and purl and then continue across. We're just gonna slip our first stitch so we have a nice pretty edge. So we have to remember our next stitch will be a purl. So I will note that in the pattern. So it'll say slip first stitch, purl, and then it's going to have the pattern repeat of knit, purl, knit, purl. So we insert from this side, do our knit, put our yarn in front, and do our purl. Move our yarn to the back. If you need lots of help on knitting and purling, check out my knit and purl videos. The links are in the description. But for the one by one, we are just going knit, bring the yarn to the front, and then purl. Bring the yarn to the back and knit and purl. I'm also going to give you a link to the video on Craftsy where I learned to knit. It's called Knitting Faster with Continental Knitting because it's the best video I've ever seen on knitting and purling and it teaches you how to do this hold and how to do this knitting and purling if my videos are not helpful enough. I highly recommend it. So our last stitch is a purl. Now, the reason that we're doing even numbers is because when we turn our work, when you feel comfortable enough, I need some slack here, when you feel comfortable enough, you will just be able to start knitting and purling again. Your stitches are already situated. So you can see the knit here and you can see the purl next. So when you learn to read those stitches, you know what you have next. So that way you don't have to go, oh, what do I do first? Do I purl or do I knit? Every single time, if it is an even number, as soon as you turn, it's knit, purl, knit, purl. Turn it again, knit, purl, knit, purl. So that makes it much easier. Because we're slipping that first stitch, we just have to think a little bit more. We just have to think of our slip as a knit. So we slip it purl-wise, then we're gonna purl because we want to match what we have already. So our next stitch is a knit, so we're gonna knit. We're matching what we did on the row below for this entire pattern. This was the pattern that made me want to learn to knit. I had a scarf that was a one by one rib and I was like, how did they do that? How do they make the knit so, so stretchy? And then I figured it out and then I learned to knit just to make that pattern because I loved that scarf so much. All right, so here we are at the end. Here is that stitch that we slipped. Nothing's been done to it. It's like this weird hanging off stitch, right? 
but we know that our very last stitch of the row is always a purl, so we know we need to purl this. And what happens is normally that end of the row stitch is kind of big, especially when you first start knitting. You just aren't used to kind of tightening your stitches, um, getting into those edge that first edge stitch the way it should be worked. So by slipping it, you're taking it from this row all the way up to the second row without working it, which means that it's getting stretched out. So every time you work, because we slipped this first, this one over here, nothing got worked into it, so it's getting pulled up. So it creates this edge where it's being pulled up on every row that you won't have that extra weird loop from not knowing how to kind of keep it tightened down. And it's kind of just practice. Like you need to, when you're actually doing the stitch and you, as you get better with it, you'll know that you kind of got to tighten it down as you work it when you're doing a regular knit stitch. But until you get that, or even if you just want a nice clean edge, you just slip that first stitch. You don't slip the last stitch, only the first, because you're working into it every other row. So I slip it purlwise again. Then we can see, here's my purl bump. So I go and do my purl. Then I have my knit. So you just have to look at your stitch to remember what to do next. As we get further on, I'm going to drop some stitches in our yarn that we're actually using. I'm going to show you how to knit backwards in case you accidentally did a knit where you should have purled or a purl where you should have knit. But this is enough to kind of get you started a little bit. It's only going to be like two seconds before I show you this stuff, but I'm going to go switch over to the actual yarn that I'm using. And then once I get to the light color, color change, I'm going to come back and show you how the yarn is looking because um, I'm really excited to try that Karen yarn and show you how our rib is looking, you know, more pronounced and how big it is. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I've gotten some of the scarf done and I'm into the lighter color yarn so we can see it a little bit better. But I wanted to show you my edge because I told you how you could slip stitch your stitches and get kind of this nice foundation crochet edge. It's got nice V's, it looks pretty, it's not loopy, it's not messy. It gives a nice edge to any scarf that you may make that you're not doing any kind of edge treatment to. So using that slip stitch creates a really pretty edge. So now what we're going to talk about is if you... Um, Partly kind of reading our stitches and how to fix a mistake because this is ribbing This is a knit and a purl. So what I like about this is because it looks Kind of like just a knit fabric, but it's got a ton of stretch It's got that hidden purl that you don't see unless you pull it apart That's what I really loved when I saw this scarf When I bought it, you know, it was how stretchy it was and how it was kind of like this little surprise when you pull it apart you're like hello so that was why I really wanted to learn to knit because I thought it was so cool that it could do that but when you're learning to do this it can be really frustrating because it's knit and purl every single stitch but once you finish this you're gonna feel like I can knit anything because I am like so skilled at going back and forth from knit to purl that I can do anything so that's why I like this as a project but there's a couple things you may encounter one you put your work down and you're picking it up and you don't know what to do next. So when we're looking at our yarn, the actual yarn should be behind us. So if I pick this up, I know that my knitting is backwards. One, because this is facing me. Two, because the yarn that's attached to a stitch should be these stitches should be in my working hand so the yarn whatever stitch it is attached to whatever stitch that needle is on that needle should be in my working hand the stitches that have no yarn attached these are not worked yet so this should be in my non-working hand of course this yarn gets brought over here because we are bringing our stitches across from we're creating a stitch with this yarn 
but to remember what hand to put it in, whatever yarn, whatever stitch the yarn is attached to goes into our working hand. So now we're good to go. We have the correct orientation for our needles. Now we need to know, okay, what do I do next? If I wasn't paying attention to what I was, you know, if I didn't write down that I just knitted or I just purled, how do I figure out what to do next? And that's where reading your stitches comes in handy. Knowing what a knit stitch looks like and knowing what a purl looks like. So when we look at the front of this, we can see the knit stitches very clearly. We can see the V's and the purls are kind of hidden. But the purls are just little bumps and the bump comes from when we knit. So when I make this little loop here, you can see the loop with the blue in the back, that little bit of blue pops to the back and becomes a purl. So it's just the knit stitch folded over. So that little nub we're seeing is the back of the knit stitch. So when I turn this over, all of those become the knit. So it's kind of a cool reverse fabric. So when we are going to look at what stitch we need to do next, we're looking right below that loop. What is right below it? Do I see a nub or a purl bump or do I see a V? So we can easily see that this is a little bump, a little purl bump. So I know that I need to purl next. So I can easily pick my work back up because I know, okay, here's a purl, so my next one should be a knit, but I'm gonna double check. Oh, there's a knit. Then I have my purl bump right here, so I know I have to purl. And I know that this is a knit and purl, so I should be good. Just going knit and purl across. Now, what happens if you accidentally did the wrong stitch? Which I did. I purposefully put two knit stitches in a row. So if you're looking from this point over, you should be able to pick them out. You should be able to see the difference. Well, it's actually three knit stitches in a row because I knit where I should have purled. So if we go even just backwards, we can see purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, knit, knit. So here is where I did a knit stitch because if we look straight down, we see that V and we can see pearls all below it. So this is where I messed up. I need to fix that, but I cannot just pull my needle out and rip it out like crochet because I can lose all of these loops and trying to get those back on can really be a pain and you don't want to do that and have to rip out your entire project. So what you're going to do instead is unknit it. So unknitting or tinking is it's also called in knit because of the sound that the needles make when they hit each other, more like for aluminum because eh, kind of tinky. I don't know. But you're going to unknit so that you can get back to that stitch that you messed up on. So hopefully after each row, you're double checking your work so that you don't find it all the way down here. It probably um, won't be that noticeable if it's just one stitch, but if you are reading your stitches and doing what you do in your stitches, you might create this whole line of knit stitches all of a sudden where you should have a purl, and then you're really going to have to go back and either unknit or pull the whole thing out. So pay attention when you finish each row. Just take a quick look at it. Make sure you haven't knit anything backwards before you go on to the next row so you can save yourself some time until you're really comfortable with everything. So to unknit is not that difficult. It's just a pain in the butt, you know, because you just did a bunch of work. You don't want to have to undo it, but it's not that bad. So what you're going to do to unknit is, if you've seen my reading your stitches video, we know that when we look at our loops, they should be with the right side in front. So right now they're backwards because we just worked all of these. But when we turn all of our loops, when we look at them like a foundation chain, the left side and the right side, the right side should be facing us. So when we unknit, we're taking those stitches that we just worked and putting them back onto our non-working hand so we can work them again we should have that right loop in the front. So that'll help you to put the needle in the right spot to unknit that stitch. So I like to do my tension and then I pull on my stitch because it shows me the loop that I just worked into. 
So we can see the last loop of the row right here. The right is right here on this side. So we can enter in and catch that loop and then I need to take this one off. So I kind of push it out to remove it and I pull on that tail and now I've got my last stitch back on my needle so I'm good to go for that. Now for a purl, well this is actually a knit, sorry. Um, for the knit, same exact thing. We pull on our stitch. We can see that loop and we're always gonna go from the front. That's gonna catch the right side loop. If we come from behind, we're gonna have the left in the front and then we're gonna have a twisted stitch. So always go in from front to back, pull that loop off, pull that tail to release it, and we've got it on the right side. Same thing for a purl. If we pull tight, the purls are a little bit harder to get into because of the way that they're made, but if we pull on it, we can see a, see a hole and we still are gonna go in through the front because it's still the same thing. It's just that the loop is pointed this way instead of that way. So we push that out, pull the tail out, and see, it's on the right side. So once you get good at this, you'll go fast. Usually you just have to kind of redo your tension. I have to redo my tension every couple of stitches. That's what makes it so tedious because I have to constantly redo my tension so that I can pull on my stitches because you don't want to like put it in here because you're going to be two rows below. So you want to pull and make sure that you're getting into the right loop. Otherwise you might put it too low and then all of a sudden your stitches are really off. So that's why I like pulling and looking for my nice big hole, put it through and pull off the yarn. Readjust your tension and you keep going. So you can see it's not fun to do this, but it's not that hard. So don't worry if you mess up a little bit. I don't even know where my problem is. Am I close or did I pass it already? Oh, almost there. Right, we have, see we have our knit here. Then right here we have a knit instead of a purl. So as you're working it, you're gonna see that. So this is the one that I made the mistake on. Pull this a little tighter so you can see it. So we can see how it looks different. See how this kind of pulls, but we have that knit there, so we need to get above it to fix it. And now we are fixed. So that's where I can stop, and then I can start purling instead of my knit where I messed up. So then I'm good to go, and I can continue on. So those are just some things to help you if you have problems while you're working. Um, it shouldn't be, those are kind of like the most, the main problems that you can have. You could also lose um, a needle, which is not fun, but if you haven't lost your loops, so you can see they're still here, they're just kind of wonky because of the knit and purling, remember that you're it's just like a foundation chain, so you want that right loop back on your needle. So you're just going to go back, put them in. If you have your loops, otherwise you're going to need to fix your stitches. So we'll do that real quick as well. What happens if I actually lose my loop? So we'll do one over here in the middle to show you what to do. Okay, so if you're working really fast and all of a sudden you do this and you lose a loop, if you're lucky and it doesn't fall all the way through, you can just grab it and stick it back on your needle and remember like which needle to go on. If you put it on this needle, your yarn is not worked through this loop, so you know that that is not the right needle, so it needs to go onto the needle that you still need to work your stitches. But if you pull it off and you lose some stitches, it's not a big deal. We'll take out two here. Stop it wherever you can and get a hold onto it. Grab your crochet hook, because you get to crochet now. When you drop stitches, you get to be better than most knitters that don't know how to crochet because you can easily put it back on because you know how to crochet. So stop it with your crochet hook and look at what you have. So I have lost two stitches because I can see two bars in between my work. I'm going to push my needles a little bit further out so I don't have to worry about losing any more stitches. So I'm just going to concentrate on this. I need to look at what stitch I'm doing first before I fix this. 
So I need to look at what's below me. So I can see that I've got V's, so this should be a knit stitch. I'm going to show you how to fix a purl stitch too, but first we need to see what did I just lose? I lost my knit stitches. So I need to make some knit stitches. So I have these fallen off loops here, and because you know how to foundation chain, this is easy. You are already ready for your next foundation chain. This is your tail yarn. This is, or not your tail yarn, but your working yarn. You're gonna reach through, just like as if you were yarning over, grab it, and pull it through. You just created a foundation chain. Again, for the next one, go under it, grab it, pull it through, and you just fixed your stitches. We need to put that loop back on our needle so we can work it. Which way does it go? Well, which side is the right side? Just look at your thing. Here's our left side, here's our right side. We want the right side facing us, us. so we're gonna put it with the right side facing us so it's not twisted. Now you're ready to keep going. You're like, yay! And then all of a sudden you drop your purl stitches and you're like, no! How do I fix this one? Because it looks totally different from the foundation chain. Now we've got all these purl bumps. So let's drop like three. Let's just get rid of a bunch of them. Oh no, what do I do? Simple. Flip it over. Now you've got a foundation chain. All you got to do when you need to fix pearls is turn it to the other side. And you're going to do it the exact same way. How many did I drop this time? Easy. We can see three. So I need to go and create three chains. So I grab it, go underneath, grab it, pull it through. Go underneath the next one, pull it through. Go underneath the next one and pull it through. It's a little easier to get a smaller hook to get into those loops rather than using like kind of the same crochet hook that you would use for this thickness yarn. It's just easier to get into those loops. So get a smaller hook when you're going to fix stitches. They even sell like kind of double-ended hooks for knitters, but you probably have a whole stash of hooks, so you're good to go. Now, same thing, we wanna put this on the right way because this was our next stitch. So we're gonna stop before we put it on and just flip it around so that we have it in the right orientation and we put it on the right needle because here's our yarn attached to this stitch. So we still need to work this stitch here. So we look at it, here's our right side, put that right side in the front. And now we're ready to move on. So do not stress if you drop a stitch, you can fix it. It just takes a little bit of time and it's much easier with this, oops, this nice big yarn because you can easily see those stitches and what you need to do with them. So practice this with this big yarn. So when you move on to worsted weight or sock weight or even lace weight, you know how to fix this stuff. So one thing that I want to go over real quick is your gauge. So unlike crochet, so you might see in your gauge on crochet, it'll say 12 double crochets and 4 inches, or 10 single crochets for 4 inches, whatever it may be. In knit, you have to pay attention to what it tells you when you're reading your gauge. So it can say usually one of two things. It'll either say gauge in STST, and that means gauge in stockinette stitch, or it'll say gauge in pattern. So for this one, it's gonna say gauge in pattern because it's easy to read. Because we have these nice defined stitches, we can see our gauge easily. But we also have to remember one thing. This is not one stitch right here. So let me get lined up here. This is not one stitch, two stitches. This is one, then a purl, then a knit. So we have to remember that there's purls in between when we're counting for our gauge. Why do we have, or why does knit have gauge and pattern, a gauge and sti um, stockinette stitch? Depends on the project you're making. If it's easily readable, in the pattern that it's made in, 
then it will usually say in pattern. If you're making a lacy shawl where it has a traveling leaf pattern, it's hard to say your gauge is four inches over the yarn over from this leaf to the yarn over to the third leaf. That's really difficult. So they'll make a gauge swatch with the same needles they're using for the shawl and put it in stockinette stitch so that you can get relatively close. So if you're within the realm of it, your shawl should be the same size. But for most projects like this scarf, it's not super important if you get exact gauge, unless you want the exactly same size of scarf that you'll see in the pattern. But for this type, for a one by one rib, because when we pull this apart, we remember that we have pearls in there. So we need to count those when we're doing our gauge so that we have the right amount of stitches. Because if I'm just counting the V's, I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, and a quarter maybe, so maybe eight and a half for four inches. That's not gonna be accurate because I actually have pearls in between. So I need to go one and then a pearl in between two, V3, pearl four, V5, six, seven, eight, and then that's like kind of a quarter, so it would even out to about half a stitch for four inches. So what did I say, eight? <laughs> so 16 and a half stitches for four inches which will make sense because of how many stitches we cast it on. So just keep that in mind whenever you're doing a knit project. Pay attention to that gauge. Make sure that you're counting it correctly, that you understand what the gauge is in, so that if you see the STST, you know that that is stuck in that stitch. Hopefully it's in the abbreviations. But that's just one thing to look for when you're doing gauge. And now back to the Okay, back. I have finished the entire scarf. I got so much length out of this one ball of Karen Cakes. That's not the right, is that what it's called? Yeah, Karen Cakes. Karen Chunky Cakes. I got it right. Um, but I got so much length. I have 96 inches of scarf. So this is the longest scarf I will have ever owned. But I actually love that because I can do so many things with it. Now, since I wanted to use up all of the yarn in the cake and not have any left over, I went until, so just make sure that you have a good length, so this is all that I have left of my yarn for the bind off, um, just make sure you have a good length so that you don't run out mid bind off because that would be really really not fun to have to unknit and then unknit a row to be able to have enough yarn to use. Okay, so the bind off we're gonna use is a little different than the bind off you might you may have already watched from me. That was just a plain stockinette bind off. We're gonna do what's called binding off in pattern. So it's very simple, it's just doing the stitch that's below. So just like we were knit, purl, knit, purl, that's what we're gonna do for our bind off. So that way it gives it a little bit more, um, like it'll, fall in line better. If I do a straight knit bind off where I knit all the stitches, it's going to kind of curl and face out and it's going to spread these stitches apart a little. So with the purl being kind of hidden by the knit stitches with this rib, we want to do a bind off that will kind of keep it that way when it's all finished. So to do this bind off, we just need to make sure that we're paying attention to what stitch ne comes next because when you bind off you do two stitches at a time or you know you knit one off and, and slip the other one, you, there's a little step in between where you're not working a stitch. So that's where reading your stitches comes in handy because if you forget or you take your time binding off or you put it down, you got to know what comes next to be able to bind off in pattern. So the first thing we need to do is knit the first stitch. So I'm not going to slip this one, I'm just going to knit it as I break my yarn doing it. <laughs> so I'm just going to knit this one and I did it again. Stop that. Alright, there we go. So I'm going to knit the first one and then I'm going to purl the second one. And that's where you stop so you can do your bind off. So you grab that first stitch and bring it over the second stitch. Now I've got one bound off. Pull up a little bit to give it some room so that you don't have a super tight bind off. That's what's called binding off loosely, which you usually see in most patterns. I don't know why you would bind off tightly for any reason. If you know, leave it in the comments. I would love to know. Um, then I just did a purl. 
but I can also see the v-stitch here nice and easy so I know I need to knit next I'll take that last one pull it over pull up a little bit here now I have a pearl so I'm gonna do a pearl so it's just paying attention to what stitch you did before so if I was doing two knits and two pearls same thing if I'm binding off in pattern I'm buying I'm doing a knit a knit slip then I'm gonna do a pearl I'm gonna do a pearl so same thing you just have to pay attention to what stitch comes next and do your bind off as normal so I'm gonna get to the end of this and I'll meet up with you if you are not totally sure on how to do bind offs check out my video it'll walk you through just this process of slipping over each other this is just the only difference here is that we're doing a different stitch every other time instead of just knit stitches Okay, I'm on my last stitch and you can see I cut it close with this so make sure that you've got at least six times the length on your edge here so that you can have enough yarn to bind off with so you're not having to unknit your bind off not fun I'll teach you that later so I'm just doing a purl in the very last one I've got this last stitch to pull over and now I'm down to my very last stitch just like in crochet pull out your needle grab your tail pull it through tighten that guy down and then weave in your ends and you're good to go so that is the one by one rib this is the scarf that made me want to knit <laughs> and now I have another one because I love these so much I just love how stretchy they are so if you have any questions about anything leave them below make sure you subscribe and like and thank you for watching